welcome back to Wine on Wednesday. And in this segment, we're going to talk about labels on wine and what they tell you. I'm here winding down for the evening, reading a book and having a good glass of wine in my PJs. And the book that I'm reading this evening is called Destiny Lingers. It's by Rolanda Watts. And if you don't know who Rolanda is, just Google her and it'll tell you a little bit about her. Here's a picture of Rolanda on the back of the book. Okay. It's a good book. Pick up a copy. I'm finishing off a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon, and um, it's a good dry wine. It's a good wine to wind yourself down with in the evening from the hustle and bustle of a busy day. So I'm finishing this off, and I'm trying to pick out another wine that's going to complement this wine. So I have two bottles here that I'm going to go over. I'm going to read about the bottle that I just finished. I didn't drink a whole bottle. It was just a little bit left. And um, I'm going to see if I can pick out something that's going to complement it. So this bottle is telling me that it is concentrated with lush flavors of red and black fruits. And the wine presents red and violet in color. And to the nose, it's very complex, displaying roasted red peppers, leather, and a touch of vanilla aromas. Yes, I did say leather. The first bottle that I have that may complement this is this one here. This is the company name here. Underneath the company name is the region. And this region just happens to be in the southwest portion of France. Underneath that, there's a notation that says Grand Vin, V-I-N, de Bordeaux. Okay. And what that represents is that this is a great wine. Grand Vin means great wine. And that's the company's way of indicating that this is one of their best. The year 2011, that means it's a vintage wine. And that also means that that's the year that the grapes were um, grown and harvested. So when you hear people say 2005 was a good year, well, that just means that the grapes grew in great conditions. The weather was sunny. It wasn't raining. The grapes weren't mushy. So a lot of wine connoisseurs keep up with that kind of stuff. They want to know if the grapes were sweet. Like you can go to the store and get grapes that are sour because they weren't picked when they were supposed to be picked or whatever type of fruit. You know, when you get a bad batch, it just might have been a bad year to grow some fruit, um, whatever the conditions were. So it's the same thing with wine. Okay, so this is 2011. And also on the back up here, it tells me that um, there's a word on here, cuvee, C-U-V-E-E. -E. And cuvee means blended. So it's telling me that this is a blended wine. And I see on here that it's blended mostly from Merlot and Cabernet Franc grapes. So that's telling me that Merlot is probably going to be the dominant grape that is in here. And I also know that because the alcohol volume in here is 14.5%, which tells me that this wine is unbalanced. Usually when you get a balanced wine, balanced with flavors, um, it's 12% or under. So there's going to be a taste in here that's going to be definitely prominent, and it's probably going to be the Merlot. Also tells you the temperature, which is 17 degrees Celsius. And the way that you can figure out Fahrenheit on here is to double this number, 17 plus 17 equals 34 minus 3, and I'm getting the 3 from the 3 and 34. You always take the first number. So 34 minus 3 minus 34 is 31, and then you add 32 to that. So 31 plus 32 is 63. So this needs to be chilled to 63 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's how you figure that, and that's how you calculate that. On here also is the website, and it also tells you that this bottle size is 75 centiliters. Now, on your average wine bottle, it normally tells you it's 750 milliliters. It's the same thing. They just put CL instead of ML and 75 CL equals 750 ML. Okay, so 
that's that. And then also there's a scanning code on here. Okay. And I don't know if you have a scanner on your phone, but you can get a free app from the Play Store. I have one on mine. It's down here. So we're going to tap on that and open that up. And we're going to scan this. And immediately the website comes up and you can tap into that in a store and it'll tell you all about the bottle of wine that you're buying. Also to let me know that this is a pretty good wine is because right here is an award. Um, this is a gold award. The awards come in bronze. Well, let's start off gold, silver, and bronze. And this is a gold award. It tells you on here the year that the award was won, 2013. And it also tells you the, um, uh, what is this? This also tells you the, um, the competition name. So this is the name of the competition and this is the award. The gold award was won in 2013. So this is probably going to be a really good wine to open up. Doesn't tell me anything about the flavor except that the two grapes that are used in here. Okay, And we're going to talk about grapes later on in another segment so you'll get an understanding on that. Now this bottle here, it tells you right on the front a little bit about it. It says that this has a unique, is a unique wine with a pleasant, fruity, raisin-like character. Okay, and as we know, raisins are dried grapes. So don't be alarmed when it says raisins. If you don't like raisins, don't think that it's going to have a taste that you just are going to hate. Open up your palate and let's try something different. Just try something different. You might be surprised. This was vintage 2012. It's by a company called Allegrini. Now, what's interesting about this bottle is that it says estate bottle by Allegrini. And when I see estate bottle, what that means is that this is probably going to be a good bottle of wine as well. Because that means that this company is 100%. Um, they have an, um, a total interest in this because they actually own the vineyard. And they take it from step one all the way through however many steps. They um, pick the grapes bottle the wine, make the wine, bottle the wine. They do everything there. So you're probably going to get a good consistency. They can't blame any mess ups on anybody else but themselves. So if they want to stay in business, their wine is going to be consistent. It goes through the same process every time. They don't have to ship grapes off and worry about somebody doing a process one way and then they get another batch that's something different. So when you see a state bottled, um, you're probably going to get a good wine. Um, this is a dry red wine, 13.5% volume in alcohol, and it also has a government warning stating that um, pregnant women probably should not drink alcohol due to birth defects. It also has um, the scanner on it. This was bottled in California. So get a taste for whether you like um, Italian wine, French wine, wine right here in California from the vineyards in Napa Valley or what you might like. Um, a bottle of this is probably going to run you about $30 or more because it did win an award. So prices vary. You know, you can walk in a wine store and get wine from $5 on up, but it depends on what you like. If you like a bottle of $5 wine, hey, it's what you like. It's not going to, it's not going to be any worse or any better than anything else. Really, if that's what you like, buy it, drink it. Um, what it doesn't tell you on these bottles is calories. If you ladies are watching um, your weight, you know that dry wine is going to have less calories in it than a sweet wine. A sweet wine, the more sugar, the more calories. So the average bottle has about a little over 25 ounces in it, and you should always pour about five or six ounces in your glass to drink at a time. Not, don't fill your whole wine glass up and guzzle it down. It's not ladylike. But 25 ounces, so if you drink a five or six ounce glass of wine, dry red or dry white wine, you're probably looking at about 85 calories. 
And if you're drinking a sweet wine, you're probably looking at about 120 calories or more per serving, okay? Um, what, um, I'm trying to think of what else it might not tell you on the bottle. Um, let me see, I might give me some notes here. Let's go and see, because I don't want to miss anything. Oh, there's no expiration date on the bottle. That's because they just didn't put one on there. Average wine, five to seven days in the refrigerator. That's how long it'll usually keep. Now, um, if you remember in one of my segments, I showed you a wine pump, something to extract the air out. You can use that. It may make it last a little bit longer, but on average, if you take the cork out and you recork it or put one of your wine stoppers in there, five to seven days, it's just like a bottle of soda. Um, you can put the top back on it, but you know as time goes on and the longer it, you open, the more you open it up and get something out of it, the more air comes in that bottle and causes oxidation. It's the same with wine. Um, every time you open it and go to pour a glass out of it, air gets in, causes oxidation. So the taste you may taste one thing today and tomorrow, it may taste another way. So um, don't be surprised if that happens. Air causes that to go flat, just like your soda. So five to seven days is shelf life, whether it's in the refrigerator or whether in the refrigerator or whether it's sitting out on your counter. Okay, keep that in mind too. Um, other than that, you know power comes on Sunday. I cannot wait. Um, we're going to have a glass of wine next Wednesday and we're going to talk about power and I, it's going to be good. So grab someone, tell them you love them. Tomorrow is not promised to anyone. And I hope to see you next Wednesday for wine on Wednesday. Have a great evening. Don't forget to pick up a copy of Destiny Flavors. I'm getting ready to finish here right now.